Well, there you heard uh, Robert Gibbs being questioned on a number of subjects, including the last one from ABC's Jake Tapper, uh, this, this skirmish that we saw uh, involving Israel and some Turkish ships carrying pro-Palestinian, some say potential militants, some say that they were on a humanitarian aid mission. Nonetheless, uh, Israeli soldiers tried to board the, that, those ships, and in five out of the six ships, there was no incident. On the sixth, they were attacked by those on the ships with metal rods, with knives, and some of those folks had guns and were waiting for the Israeli soldiers. And my next guest says that actually the United States and our policies may have played a real role in what we saw happen to Israel uh, the other day. Joining me now is Michael Goodwin. He's a New York Post columnist and a Fox News contributor. You know, Michael, in your column you say uh, that, first of all, Washington supports the embargo on Gaza and that we we might have stopped this dangerous flotilla simply by making it clear how, that what? Right. Well, look, uh, there was a lot of talk leading up to the launch of these ships. I mean, it was going on all during last week. Uh, President Obama certainly should have known something about it. Secretary of State Clinton certainly should have known. The organizers were talking about not delivering humanitarian aid, but breaking the blockade. This was clearly designed not to deliver goods. In fact, Hamas, in the end, turned down some of the goods because they were going to be trucked over. Israel said, we'll take the goods, we'll truck them over, but we want to inspect them to make sure there are no weapons. They they didn't want that. They wanted to break the blockade. And, and let, let me just, because I didn't do a very good job of, of getting our viewers up to speed on exactly what happened, just in case you, you folks haven't been following it that closely. What happened was uh, these ships are going over, right? Because Israel's blockaded Gaza. They don't want the ships going into Gaza, which is controlled by Hamas, which our State Department recognizes as a terrorist organization. So there's a blockade. It's a blockade that Egypt joined, that Israel uh, is, is having an effect, and it's a blockade that Washington supports, right? So these ships say, well, we're going through the blockade anyway. We want to get humanitarian aid to the folks in Gaza. Israel says, if you want to give them aid, we'll give them the aid for you. Pull the ship over into an Israeli port, we'll deliver the aid. But we're worried you may have weapons in there. We're getting killed by mortar and uh, other attacks from Gaza, so we don't want to facilitate anything that might potentially deliver weapons. Fine, they boarded the ships, everything went fine, except for on the sixth ship, which re they got attacked violently by those on board the ship, uh, the knives and so on. Nine people wound up getting killed, as, including, as it turns out, one American, as he heard Jake Tapper raise with the administration moments ago. Now the big question is, what should the White House do? This is a, our staunchest ally, Israel. Should we back them? Should we condemn them? The international world community has condemned Israel across the board. Now back to you, Michael. Sorry. Uh, I don't understand. How is it that you feel that President Obama's policies, that the White House policies, played any role in this? Well, it goes beyond just this incident. It is, in fact, the way the United States has walked away from Israel. They did it at the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, basically wanting Israel to put all its cards on the table about nuclear weapons. They've done it with the Palestinians, with with demanding uh, Israel stop building in Jerusalem, with dressing down the prime minister, with snubbing the prime minister. And in my game, in my book, that, that is saying open season on Israel, game on for everybody who wants to come at Israel. And so then the United States, I argue, is weakening Israel by making it clear that the United States is now saying to others, we don't agree with Israel, we're not going to stand by them the way the Bush administration did, the way the Clinton administration did. And the result is the wolves in the Mideast. And these are wolves who want to devour Israel. They don't want Israel to exist. So when the United States weakens its commitment, when it suggests that it's going to step away from Israel, the impact is that it, it begets aggression in all of those who want Israel to go away. That, I think, is the context of this flotilla. So, it's not about humanitarian aid. It's about taking advantage of the license the Obama administration has granted. So it's sort of like when you've got, uh, in, in the schoolyard, you've got the bullies who are picking on the one kid, and right. they keep picking on the one kid until there's a a, a bigger kid, a football player, comes over and says, don't mess with that kid. Yeah. He's got my full support. But you're saying basically we're the big football player, Israel's the kid, and the football player, we, have basically removed ourselves from the playground. So the kid is sitting there exposed and the bullies are circling. Absolutely. Israel would probably would not exist today were it not for United States protection. Now, protection is not just that we've ever gone to war for Israel, which we haven't. It is just the sense that we are there to stand by them in the, in the event of. And so what, if Israel can ever not protect itself, that the United States has effectively, although not with a treaty, but has effectively guaranteed 
impede Israel's security. Obama seems to be removing that, calling that into doubt. And what's happening is all these tests now. You have groups like Hamas and Hezbollah in, in Lebanon uh, testing Israel to see what they can get away with, to see what we will do. Well, this is quite dangerous because if someone actually launches an attack on Israel, I mean, you know, God forbid, Iran, somebody launches an attack on Israel, that significantly raises the stakes for the United States. What, I mean, what can we do now to try to tamp this down? Well, I think one of the things you're seeing, Megan, is that uh, because Israel is worried that we're not in their corner, they're, they're, they're becoming more aggressive, too, because they do feel they're on their own. They do feel that the United States is not, not there to protect them in the way it was. So I think it makes Israel nervous. And of course, on the other side, you have aggression. So I think what has happened in the last 18 months of the Obama administration is you have more likely to have war in the Mideast than you did before. Mm. Sobering assessment. Michael Goodwin, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it.